21 top 40 hits, five straight number one albums, sold out tours, Grammy awards. But after a decade of success, they were shocked by the death of their lead guitarist, Terry Kath. Management and record company changes meant they faced new challenges in the 80s. And then they came back stronger than ever. In fact, according to chart statistics, Chicago was one of the most successful American rock groups of the past 35 years. First number one hit in the world. I'm doing my pool in the San Fernando Valley. I'm just sort of, oh, here's a leaf here and there, and I go, hey, racket it back with the ball of wax, KHJ, and here comes a breaker for you on KHJ. Dun 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 dun. And it's a true story. My hand to God. I'm going, Jacqueline, this McCartney's got a song out. I'm going, this sounds familiar. She goes, you stupid fool. You were down at the session or whatever. It's If You Leave Me Now. I said, you think this is going to be a hit? When If You Leave Me Now came out, uh, that song was so popular for such a long period that we came with more ballads. I mean, you want to follow up on that, kind of, that type of success. Another gold single that Jimmy Panko wrote, Just You and Me. And I said to Jimmy, I says, is this any good? He says, forget about it. I do remember we had an enormous fight. And I sat at the piano, and this song started just pouring out of me. Boom, 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 boom. You are my love and my love. The lyrics happened. Every, the, the idea happened. I just sat there, and I started singing this song and playing it. And I ran in and I grabbed my girlfriend. I said, you gotta come out here and listen to this. We gotta fight more often. This is incredible. You can do it live. And it's fun for the audience because they get to, if they come to a show, they can see it, the side of the band that they don't hear on radio or on CD. in balance, and, except maybe our mental capacities. <laughs> we were on the road all the time, just playing and then moving here and doing this TV show, going to Europe and coming back and doing another album and writing these songs. And, you know, I mean, <sighs> a whirlwind. Chicago concert, and they walk out with a smile. We've done our job. You believe in you, and I know you believe in me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will realize what that all that is supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Peter Cetera is one of the finest singers in the world. Mr. McCartney, you are too, and stuff. But I'd say if I ranked singers in the top five, Peter would be right up there. It was about a relationship as well, that, that, that the relationship among the people of the band can also kind of be correlated uh, with the song at the same time. About that time, I said, you know, or t and Terry would have said it this way, we on a record and it's gonna sell a million. Wrong old great saxophone breath. I think to a certain degree the band uh, ha has been uh, swayed by the comfort of, their per of our personal lives, our comfort in our personal lives, and, uh, and just what's easy to do. We come up with with an up tempo song that we thought was going to be a hit, or you know, at, at least in our minds, we got a chance to do it. And uh, people wouldn't play that because they said it didn't sound like Chicago. The first time I heard that, I, I went, I, 
You're kidding, though, aren't you? What do you mean it doesn't sound like Chicago? And then I realized that they had decided what we sound like. And that's the way it was going to be. Unfortunately, along the way, Peter decided that he wasn't happy and we wished him well. And, and you know, he just, he wanted to try the solo thing and Lord knows I can understand it now. I was real mad about that. We all were, you know. It was, you know, here was another link to the band. And this was a band that, you know, death do us part type thing. We're determined to make, to break new ground. Geez, this young buck come along named Jason Sheff. Man, he's got a marvelous voice. Straight up.